Good afternoon, and welcome to the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. We're here in the old Mercury Mission Control Center display on the occasion where we celebrate America's 50th anniversary in space. And today we have two special guests, two of the original Mercury 7 astronauts, John Glenn and Scott Carpenter. So we're going to have some opening comments from them, and then we'll take your questions. Go ahead, Tim. Well, thank you all very much, and welcome. And uh, glad to be down here with everybody today, and glad to see such a turnout today. It's, uh, of course, hard for all of us, I guess, especially those, all of you who are younger, to realize it's been 50 years. It's hard for me to believe that. It seems like just a couple of weeks ago to me because things were impressed so much at the time. The experiences of the flight have been recalled so often since that time. But I look at, uh, at commemorative days like this to look back. It, it's sort of fun to look back and, and see where things have come since that time. But I think they're useful in, in looking forward. And that's the main purpose of something like this is to look forward and plan and and use those things of the past as a, as a stepping stone to the future. He said, it is a special pleasure for both of us, and I'm sure John will agree with me on this, to be back where the times were so magic in the early 60s, Cocoa Beach and uh, Cape Canaveral at that time, Cape Kennedy, were magic places filled with dedicated, uh, devotees of space flight. Everyone was behind us. The whole nation was behind what we were doing. You guys have had a unique perspective on the world and the planet that we live in. When you look back at the planet Earth, what do you make of what us humans have done to it? Well, I think I think when you're up there, you you look down and you're, you can see whole nations at a glance. And you can't help but uh, look down on a, on a flight or look up at the uh, end of the Mediterranean, look at the things up there, and beautiful clear day, and, and see the ground in the distance up there. And think about all the problems in that area as one example that are man problem, problem, man-made problems. Why can't we man solve these same problems? I think that the space program, if you put it in a bigger context, I think it's been a good influence on on international relations. We have 15 or 16 nations cooperating on the International Space Station. Unheard of, one of the greatest cooperative efforts ever put together. That's worked out very, very well. And so I think some of this working together, and I think the decision by President Eisenhower way back to make our program open for the whole world, make it open to the international press, which contrasted it with the Soviet closed program, secretive program that they had. Uh, I think that was a very, very wise decision. Uh, and it, it meant that there was this tremendous attention as we sort of shared this information with the rest of the world. I think uh, that has continued uh, basically through the, the cooperation on the International Space Station also. I think uh, the thing that came to me of greatest value was a realization that we on this planet are in a real survival situation. You see from a distance that we are this tiny speck in a huge sea of nothing, and we're a long way from any resupply. We better take care of the resources we have on this planet, because there's no resupply possible. And so it, uh, it meant to me uh, that it was important to get that feeling across to the citizens of the world. Take care of what you have because uh, there's no resupply available. 